What if I told you that the best way to play cloth was without the barrel? And I'm being completely serious. See, I find that one of the problems that cloth has is it can't find what it needs when it needs it. For example, if you're trying to dig for a boss late game, it's going to be really hard to draw that boss with the barrel when you have three judges clogging up your hand. And it's not like we can play Swovit with its nest stash ability, because we simply just don't have the bench space. So what's the solution to this problem? Well, I'm going to tell you, I've crafted a completely new way to play Cloth, reinventing the deck entirely. And this way, you are never going to miss that crucial boss ever again. This deck is playing cross switchers as well as Pokemon catchers and Peony to hold all the glue together. Combine this with the draw power of Pokestop, and you're literally drawing through half your deck in one turn, bossing up whatever Pokemon you want without fail every single time. Today, I'm going to go over my Pokestop Cloth deck, or as I've dubbed it, Poke Cloth. And let's just get right into the deck list. Just want to give a quick thank you to the sponsor of the channel, PTCGL Store. If you need codes, you know where to go. Head over to PTCGOStore.com and use code HITMON to get 5% off your order. You get a good product for a good price and you help out the channel as well. So thank you to the sponsor for supporting me and thanks to you for supporting me too. And now we'll get right back into the video. What is going on everybody? Hitmon Channing here back again with another Pokemon training card game on my deck tech. Today we're taking a look at Cloth, one of my personal favorite decks and my brand new list and way to play it that I actually think is really, really strong. It is like Gusting Cloth as I like to call it or Pokey Cloth because Pokestop is our stadium of choice. Unhinged Scissors is a really good attack because you can do 30 plus 160 more if you're affected by a special condition for only a double turbo energy. That's going to mean you're doing 170 damage plus anything that your opponent may incur from poison damage. That could be three damage counters because of Rain and Suyin Sneasler. And I'm sure you know the combo by now. You use Hisuian Electrode in combination with Spicy Season Curry to bump that damage up uh, plus the poison. You know, you can be doing a maximum of 230 damage for zero energy with Electrode. And that's kind of where the key of the deck comes in, is you can use that electrode to knock out any of your opponent's two prize liabilities thanks to our inclusions of Pokemon Catcher, our inclusions of Cross Switcher, inclusions of Boss, and the other secret sauce being Echoing Horn. Now this deck all comes together because we can use Peony to fetch any of these trainer card pieces at any time, two of them, so we can literally just Peony, take Cross Switcher um, to gust something up and switch at the same time. Um, and stuff like that. The list is on screen. I don't want to spoil too much of how this is going to go. But we're going to get some awesome games. So stick around and let us get some dubs with Pokey Soft Cloth. Our opponent has called the coin flip. They called heads. I was going to say Tails never fails, but they got heads and Tails has failed us. But that's okay. Hopefully they're going to choose to go first here, um, which is awesome. We do definitely want to be going second so we can get the first KO. That's like the key here is you want to be getting the first KO, the crucial KOs on your opponent's Pokemon. And we got a pretty solid hand, especially if going second. We can use Peony to get another cross switcher piece and something like um, our Ancient Booster Energy Capsule. Looks like we're playing against Chen Pao, which should be a pretty good matchup for us depending on what they start. Um, you know, they have a lot of tricks up their sleeve, but we got a lot of tricks as well. We got another cloth, which is pretty good, and our opponent's gonna start with the Frigibax, and they're gonna go likely draw for turn here. Now, I'm debating, you know, because this deck, like, gusts every turn, right? They got a Nest Ball. What am I gonna be gusting up here? Maybe if they just get the double Frigibax, I, you know, I don't do much about that, but they got Radiant Greninja, and that kind of tells me they either have a VIP in their hand, or their hand is really, really bad for the following turn. Um, and they're just trying to get more, but I knew that they, they found their second Frigibax there, and if that's it, that's it, and that's okay. Um, they're attaching the water energy to that Frigibax, which is interesting, and they're gonna pass. Now, I think if I can here, I wanna get rid of Radiant Greninja. We get a VIP off the top, which is incredible, so we're gonna start with the VIP, and we're gonna definitely get Brute Bonnet and definitely get Electrode. No Squawk ability, which is important to note. Um, we have kind of everything we need right now because... Uh, we do play the Hisuian Heavy Ball, so we can grab our Squawk Ability from the deck. And we're definitely going to grab those two fellas here. And now I want to go for the Nest Ball. I want to grab myself Mew, just so we can recover a bit from this Peony. Then I want a Nest Ball, and I want Nest Ball to grab me um, Hisuian Sneasler, I think. Now we could pro we're going to try and go with Electrode, obviously. But I first want to go for the Trekking Shoes. We got Pokestop, which... I think it's more important that we get it off of this. So we'll go for the Pokestop first and foremost. We'll hit it. And that was a the, probably the worst Pokestop I've ever seen. Um, so I don't, I'm don't. i not a fan of that. Now what I want to do here is I want to go for the... It sucks, but I want to go for the Peony. We have the one cross switcher in our hand. So we're not going to be able to take make full use of that. Um, and I think what I want to grab here is we can grab Pokemon Catcher. Like double cross switcher I think is the play here but we really needed to find that 
Ancient Booster or the Four Seal Stone I got the Trekking Shoes, for example. So I think what we got to do, or maybe, you know, this is, I think, our play. We go for the Heavy Ball, and then we go for Spicy, or sorry, we go for a Switch card. I think that's what we got to do. Then we got to bank off of what we switch into here. So we'll go for the Heavy Ball play, get our Squawk ability. We do have one other Cross Switcher prized, so we only have one access to one set of Cross Switchers right now. That's okay. This is a pretty ideal setup for us. We're going to go switch cart first um, into the Mew. And yeah, we're going to restart I'm, just so we can see if we get any of the pieces we need. We got the double turbo, which is really, really solid. So we'll attach that. Then we'll go ahead and squawk and seize. We need like a Pokemon catcher or something here. Um, we got the Pokemon catcher. So I want to go for the trekking shoes first. In terms of the curry, I don't think we need to keep this one. We can get rid of this and just kind of dig through a little bit more. Nest Ball's okay. So we'll start with the Pokemon Catcher, see if we can get that Greninja up. Um, and we can, which is awesome. So we're going to get that Greninja into the active spot here. The reason that I want to grab Greninja, I will talk about in just a second. But we're going to go into Cloth. We have our Ancient Booster Energy Capsule here. And boom, Toxic Powder. Unhinged Scissors, baby. We're going to take that Greninja out and take the first prize of the game. Now, like I said, the reason I think getting Greninja is very important here is in the early game, they just have Greninja. They didn't get a Bidoof down, so that means that they're going to be relying on Greninja to completely, like, carry them through the game. And now, they're going to, I feel like, struggle a little bit to draw some more cards, see what they're able to get, you know, throughout the following turns here. They led with this Frigibax, not the one with the energy on it, which is another tell telling sign for example if they're going to go for a chen pao play they want that energy uh still attached right so they're not going to waste it retreating um but, or maybe they're waiting they're saving it for a turn so they don't have to retreat uh this frigibax to the bench or whatever because they're not going to be attacking this turn they have a pretty mediocre pokestop right now as well um and we're going to see what exactly they do here they might not have much because I had a feeling they were relying on that Radiant Greninja. There is a Cross Switcher. But little do they know, we have a Cross Switcher in hand as well. <laughs> Which we're going to hopefully be able to abuse here. Um, and I think in that case, we're going to go up with the Electrode. We'll see what they get. Because if they get something like a Chen Pao, them getting rid of the Iron Hands is interesting. Um, or they might even go for a Bidoof. Because, you know, they might have a Barrel in hand. That Bidoof is gone. Like 1000% that Bidoof is gone. Uh, yeah, see, that's what I was thinking. They had no draw. That's completely okay with me because we can just cross the switcher it up and be good to go. Um, this is important because we are down two, like both of our switch carts. We don't have access to another cross switcher. So I'm thinking we go for the cross switcher play on the Bidoof. Um, or we'll go into Mew first just so we can give ourselves a little bit more leeway. I don't want to necessarily get rid of this hand. I think this is pretty solid here. And the Pokestop is risky because I want to get an attachment onto this Root Bonnet, actually. So in case they try and stick it, it's easier for us to move it after. Um, let's go for it. Let's risk it for the Biscuit here, see what we get. And again, another terrible Pokestop, but that's okay because we're doing quite fine right now. We'll retreat into our good pal Cloth here. Poison with the Toxic Powder and Unhinged Scissors is going to knock out this Bidoof completely and very freely i guess um yeah we get our other prize which is i had a feeling going to be a double turbo energy and now my plan is to just stick this on the brute bonnet reason being is to kind of deter them from trying to stall it for a turn our other guys all got one retreat except for brute bonnet there's another bidoof they have coming down here which is interesting a poke stop is gonna be really bad for them um and now I'm guessing they had a bit barrel in their hand because if they got rid of one, they got to have a way to get a bit barrel here. Now, now might be the time to go for the peony Pokemon catcher big play and try and get that guy knocked out. I'll attach this to the brute bonnet and we'll go for a Pokestop first. See if we don't have to ditch the hand with peony. We do get a whack of cards. Let's see if we can Pokemon catcher up this Bidoof one more time. That would be awesome. We don't get it. So I think we're going to have to go for the peony play here. Um, I could heal the spicy season curry, but it's not really worth it. Let's go right for the peony. Just ditch that hand. And alternatively, we can echoing horn plus Pokemon catcher to put the iron hands up and knock that out. But maybe the best call, because we don't have any gust left. This is our last gust. Maybe the best call, I think, might just be go for the Pokemon catcher. Um, and I think the echoing horn could be good to save. 
for later. I don't know, it's, a, it's an interesting dilemma because I don't want them to draw any cards. So I want to keep them locked out of this game as much as possible. So we'll get the Pokemon Catcher. Maybe we'll get Peony for the following turn just so we can get some spicy seasoned curry and all that jazz. So we'll do that. We'll go for the Pokemon Catcher. Fingers crossed for a heads, getting rid of this Bidoof. It is a heads, so that Bidoof is a goner. Um, we can bring that right up. And we'll go for the Mew. And we can just start drawing some more cards here with Restart. Pretty decent cards, can't complain. There's our Toxic Powder, and here are our Unhinged Scissors. And that Bidoof is once again a goner. So, as you can see, the power of Cloth kind of just comes from, okay, I'm gonna boss his orders every single turn, and you're not gonna do anything about it. Um, because now they're kind of just in top deck mode. Top deck, see what Pokestop gets them. If Pokestop doesn't get them anything relevant, then they're kind of cooked here. There's the Pokestop. Again, nothing of use. So we'll see what their top deck was. Um, but from there, they're, yeah, they're gonna scoop. I figured. See, against one of the best decks right now, Chen Pao, solid little setup, but because we're able to immediately target down that Greninja and keep, like, putting the pressure on, you know, an ordinary cloth deck with the barrel would not be able to do that. This cloth deck can. We flip that coin into this tails, so we're gonna choose to go second here. We do not want to be going first. Um, our opponent, they're more than welcome to. They can go first, they can do whatever they please. But we're just gonna hang out, and this is a really solid hand. I think starting Brute Bonnet is the play for sure. Yeah, we're definitely starting Brute Bonnet. Because if I can just use Cross Switcher first to boss up something, and I can choose whether or not I need to use... Oh boy, if this is my ride on, we're gonna have a good time, my friends. Um, they're starting with the hands. Lugia! Okay. Wow, they got a busted turn one. It's gonna be a V-Star for sure. Has, it's gonna, it, it has to be a V-Star here. Has to be a V-Star. They're, they're definitely very cocky. I, I feel it. I feel it in my bones. They're definitely very cocky and they're gra gonna grab the V-Star here. Oh, they're gonna grab Squawk. Even more partners for us to just immediately destroy. They're gonna Nest Ball. What are they grabbing? They're grabbing a second Lugia. No, what is happening here? Noibat? Okay, interesting. Um, they seem to know what they're doing. They got all the cool hearts as well. So yeah, that's interesting. My 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 grand plan is literally gonna be. You're like, oh, he's definitely knocking out that iron hands. No, I'm going, I'm going down. Oh, I'm going so down and dirty. You have no idea. No squawk, no problem. Is heavy ball in the deck? It is. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a good time here. Um, I can put my cloth down. I have my group bonnet. I need me uh, Sneasler is what I need here. Um, yeah, I need to grab Sneasler at this point. And then I should have everything else I need in the deck. We have our booster energies. We have our seasoned curries. We're chilling. Oh, we're we're going absolutely insane here. We can throw this forest seal stone down and go for these trekking shoes. Don't need another forest seal stone. Not at all. Double Pokemon catcher, sure. I don't care. I'm going all the way in. I'm getting this Lugia. This Lugia is getting destroyed. 100% this Lugia is getting destroyed. We can start Alchemy here. Start Alchemy is going to be able to nab us our Peony, which can grab us the Heavy Ball. And Heavy Ball can grab us the Squawk. And then in that case, what else do we need? We need a Curry and a Tool. So I think the Tool is less likely to get. So off the Peony, we're going to go ahead, use my good pal. And we're going to grab the Heavy Ball. We're going to grab our Ancient Booster Energy Capsule. We still have Pokemon Catcher and one Cross Switch is prized. So that is going to be good for us. We can go for this Heavy Ball. Welcome, my friend Squawkabilly. These being prizes is a little bit of an issue, but we should theoretically draw one off of the prizes, which is going to be very good for us. Now, we literally just got to hit a spicy seasoned curry, and they're cooked. And what? Sometimes things are just disappointing, you know? Sometimes things are just dis like you're disappointed, and there's nothing you can do about it. That. That's insanely tragic. That is wildly tragic. That we didn't hit a Pokestop, a Trekking Shoes, a Spicy Season Curry. We didn't hit any of that. You're telling me we hit none of that in half the deck? Oh man, that's what I get. Honestly, I deserve that for being too cocky. I definitely deserve that. There's, there's no way. There's actually no way. 
Capturing aroma, please. B, tails. Oh, I'm... I was too cocky. I deserve that. I was too cocky and I deserve that. That's fine. Um, that's, that's completely fine. Yeah, because now they get to summoning star. Thankfully, though, we got the first hit. I mean, they're going to get to be able to knock out this electrode. But hopefully we're able to offset our prize trade twice using cloth. Um, I'm... I'm in pain. We deserve that. We're going to be doing 170 minus... 30 as well and that is going to be uh 140 with the poison we can still knock out lugia which is good um because of our radiant history and sneezler so that i'm fine with and they're just going to tempest dive that's okay with me you get your two prizes i'm actually so mad i'm actually very mad about that that should not have happened that should not have happened it shouldn't have it should not have happened um, of course, it's the next card, and I am just eternally punished for everything that I do. Uh, we're gonna drop this onto the cloth here. We can retreat, go into cloth, and boom toxic powder one more time. That is gonna be enough, thankfully, because of the poison damage. So we'll unhinged scissors, and they're not gonna get to draw off of the gift energy, I don't think, because the poison's what, what kills them, correct? Yep, it's by damage only, so they don't get to draw an extra card off the gift energy. Now, I'm aware that Iron Hands is a card. I'm aware Iron Hands can come through and mess us up. But their following turn, like, we follow up the Iron Hands with the Cloth. Then we'll see what they can do about that. They gotta get another Pokemon down that's able to, um, obviously get a two-prizer in order to win. They need to Primal Turbo this as well. And they need to have a boss, so they need a lot as well um for this to work and i don't know what kind of lugia deck they're playing so hopefully it's one that'll let us take the uh take the big dub i'm a little worried i'm a little scared i'm not gonna lie uh after after what i just experienced they have luminion luminion's definitely grabbing them a research or an iono iono works too maybe they have too many energies in their hand that could be the problem they're gonna collapse which is good because I can get rid of Squawkabilly here. Um, that means like that if they're going to use Snorlax or something, for example, they can't use Snorlax to KO Mew if they don't have, like if they need to use a double turbo energy. So again, mid hand after mid hand, that's just how this game is played. Um, and we're going to amp us very much for 120. That again, I'm completely fine with. They need a lot to go right in order to win the game next turn. They have Luminion on the field. And as long as we can get our, you know, we can get a good old um, boss's orders at some point, we'll be okay. But I'm going to start and go ahead with the Nest Ball. Nest Ball is going to grab me Electrode. Electrode is going to be our game winner on that Luminion, hopefully. And now we can go ahead. Just simple turn. Toxic Powder. Unhinged Scissors. Goodbye. My good friend, Iron Hands EX. It was nice knowing you. They do get to draw one off Gift, which I do not really mind in the slightest. And we get to draw two prize cards. Hopefully one of them is the boss, which it is. Now, I'm not expecting an Iono here. I don't think that's wise. They're gonna lead the Noibat. Um, and I don't know why Noibat's in here. My guess is that there's the single prize Noibat that is from like Astral Radiance, which has Radiant Hunter. And Radiant Hunter just immediately kills Radiant Pokemon. Um, that's my guess of, as to what they're playing. Oh, they're playing Noivern EX. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe they're trying to keep this in play. I don't. I don't know why this is. I'm. Con I'm a little confused. But they're just gonna Covert Flight, 50 damage, and we just have the game here. Covert Flight means we can't. Um, oh, we can't hit it by basics. That don't matter to me. Boss's orders, baby. Luminion, come say hello. And Brute Bonnet, Toxic Powder. And that's going to be the game with the Unhinged Scissors taking out this really wacky but also really cool Lugia V-Star deck. We should have had that. I'm so salty from the beginning, but you know what? It makes, it makes for good content. So that's going to be all the prizes taken. It's going to be the dub against Lugia V-Star. Our opponent flipped the coin, but Tails has not failed us. So we're going to get to choose to go second in this match. We always want to be going second with Cloth, our good buddy, old pal. And we're going to see what we are up against here and what our opening hand is like. This is a decent opening hand. I don't like starting a Peony and a Cross Switcher at the same time. Um, because that limits the amount of Cross Switchers we can use. They start a Mew EX, which again is really good for us. Because we, almost, we just have a guaranteed KO on it as long as our Pokemon Catcher hits. It's a Roaring Moon, and that's going to make me really happy. 
um, because if we can just initiate this prize trade, we're going to be in a great spot. They're going to get Moltres. They're going to get Squawkabilly off that VIP. And I'm guessing what's going to happen next is they're literally just going to um, finish this Earthen Vessel. Maybe they have a second one and then they're just going to Squawk and Seize, try and get some more cards. Um, yeah, if we're able to get this, um, this knockout here on the Roaring Moon, that would be really good because I have a feeling they're going to put down Raining Greninja and maybe they won't be able to get another Roaring Moon. Um, and yet, especially if they start powering it up, if we can make them just waste resources for no reason, that'd make me really happy. So we'll see what we can come up with here. We have a really solid starting hand um, and I would like to be able to take advantage of that. There's the Ultra Ball, I'm guessing grabbing Raining Greninja or they could be grabbing the second moon now um, if they find they have enough draw for this turn, which again makes sense. But I doubt they're going to spread their energy out. I feel like they might not have the resources to do so. Town Store is incredible for us because that guarantees us any piece we want. In this case, it could be the Cross Switcher. Um, they're going to get the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule. Again, that do not matter to me, my friend. Put that on your moon. Put all your eggs in that basket. My Electrode is coming for you. ASAP. It's, he's, he's on his way. He's on his way to destroy you. Um, I wouldn't personally have gone for the Moltres here. I would have waited to see what the Squawk and C's got. There's the energy switch. Oh, all of those eggs are in a single basket. There's no way, big dog. You can put all your resources into that Roaring Moon. But it's mine. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up here. You're, you're cooked. You're, you're cooked, my friend. You're cooked. I don't, I don't know how to tell you this. Three energy on a Roaring Moon? And at least they can start prepping the other ones. Now all they're going to need is like an E-Switch and an attachment uh, after I knock this out. Um, they're going to choose a new active Pokemon, which I'm guessing is going to be the Roaring Moon without energy on it. And, or maybe they'll, they'll be generous and bring this Roaring Moon up, being like, no way, there's no way that this Electrode can destroy it this turn. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> there's no shot! There's no shot, they're so cocky! Holy, they're so cocky! Okay, now we gotta play this a little bit differently. We're definitely getting these two down, for sure, right? We can Town Store, and Town Store can just grab us the uh, Ancient Booster. The thing is, I don't wanna get rid of so many resources. We have, okay, we have two Cross Switcher. We have two Pokemon Catcher. We don't have Boss, so that's that's okay. What we'll do is we'll put both of these guys down, and we'll use the Town Store to immediately grab our um, Booster Capsule. And yeah, that's fine. This is a fine start. Nest Ball can grab us our Squawk. Then all we need is Sneasler, and we need Mew, and we'll be okay. So we can go for the Seasoned Curry, and. They even just drop Peony right away. I think that I'm, I'm fine with that. Because um, I can literally just thin. I can ultra, ultra, ultra thin this hand down. Literally just like play a VIP, get one Mon, play VIP, get another one. Grab Mew. And I can play the other VIP and get Sneasler. Um, and that's fine. And that's A-OK -okay with me. Because I don't want to squawk away something that I'm going to want to use, right? Now, I don't want to Mew here. Um, I want to wait and see. That's completely okay with me, to be honest. Yeah, I'm fine with this. We'll start with the shoes. Shoes can... We'll just ditch that VIP like it's no tomorrow. Pokemon Catcher is really good to grab. Um, I want to... Do I want to get rid of this town store? I do want to get rid of this town store. And we'll go for Pokestop here. Um, that's a terrible Pokestop. But that's fine. Because we can literally just go for Toxic Powder, and boom, Tantrum Blast. You're done, Roaring Moon. I'm not quite sure why. They they literally were like, there's no way he's getting the KO. I don't know why they did that. I'm, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. Now, we'll see what they do. But the reason I wanted to get rid of the, their town store is, depending on what their hand is, which we don't know, they might not have a good hand. And then, in that case... I don't want to give them access to four seal stone to put a Moltres. That's my main concern here. Um, but yeah, we got a really good setup. We're chilling. Peony putting in the work. They are our opponent putting in the work, giving us some free um, free cards. Just in, insane. Uh, in, in, just an insane thing. They're gonna emergency jelly here, uh, which is irrelevant. 
to the matchup. Um, they get an energy switch, which means if, as long as they have an energy in their hand, they can attach with Roaring, they can attack with Roaring Moon, literally no problem. Um, but if they don't get a booster energy capsule down, then we literally don't even need to use our curry. We can just po poison, and the poison proc will KO them. Now this is fine. They got to research again. If they can't bring up another Roaring Moon, that they're they're good to go. Um, there's an earthen vessel coming out from them, getting dark energies, and I want to check this emergency jelly. This emergency jelly might be concerning. The reason why is because um, it says in between turns and poison damage is calculated on Pokemon checkup, which is, or sorry, this is at the end of each turn. Poison damage is calculated in between turns. So we need to be very careful here. We can't, we have to use our spicy season curry to take that Roaring Moon out. We can't KO it otherwise. Um, so we'll see what exactly they got going on. It's just going to be a Calamity Storm. And as long as we have our other Electrode in the deck, which we don't, because um, our good pal was knocked out uh, by my foolish Poke stopping, So we'll have to lead with Mew here. And I'm thinking the way that I want to play this is... I'll go for the Cloth, or not for the Cloth, I'll go for the Poke Stop first. Don't know if I have the Rod in deck. That's fine. Um, so what I'm going to have to do here, I need to four seal stone and rod has to be in the deck. I didn't check. I didn't check, but it has to be there. It is. Okay. Thankfully it is because I'm going to put both of the electrodes back, uh, that are knocked out just two electrodes and then nest ball immediately. So we can't just get Iona to lose the game, right? We're going to do that. Bring up this other electrode. And then it's pretty simple from here on out. We retreat. And our Toxic Powder is going to enable us to kill with Roaring Moon thanks to the Poison Peak ability on Radiant Hisuian Sneasler. So, boom, you get 200 damage. But see, this is what I mean. Technically, our turn ends. They would heal with Emergency Jelly, then they'd get poisoned by 30. So that's why we need to save these Spicy Season Curries for that situation. And now I'm not really expecting an Iona or anything like that here because they just don't have the resources to continue playing the game. They don't have the resources to literally just keep going and keep chaining attackers together. So I'm not super worried because they can't Iona us and chain our Roaring Moon. They're, they're probably hoping he do, that I don't have the Spicy Season Curry or they're gonna try and just go for the um, stall maybe? Or maybe, yeah, maybe that's their play. They boss and they pass and then we just switch cart. Boom, we're good to go. They got Collapse Stadium. Again, fine with me. Goodbye, Squawkabilly. Um, we got everything we need in our hand. There's like, we have game in hand. There's nothing they can do. Yeah, I figured. They were just cooked. Anything else bringing up, they would instantly just lose the game. Their only hope is Emergency Jelly. Unless they are able to get the KO here. But I don't think they can. I don't think they have enough resources to attack. I would have led with the Mew to see maybe if they got like Sada plus Pokemon Catcher. Don't necessarily know what they're playing, but that's a possibility as well. Um... If they KO'd Brubonnet, we could have had a tougher time, but then Peony would have just been able to save us, or we could literally have gone Cloth, Attach, Boss, anything on the bench. But all we need to do is switch guard into our Electrode and um, go for the Spicy Seasoned Curry plus the Toxic Powder once that finishes. And there's the Concede. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, the game froze for a sec. But there we go. That is our dub with uh, Boss Cloth, uh, or Pokey Cloth, as I like to call it, against Roaring Moon. E X. So what did you think of my Pokey Cloth deck? This deck is like insanely fun to play. And if you go through all the matchups right now that are in the game, if you go, you know, against Maridon, Charizard, Rapid Strike, even if you encounter Lugias, Arceus's, Roaring Moon's really popular, Chen Pao's really popular, um, all of those matchups are really good for this deck. As long as obviously they don't draw the perfect, perfect nuts and like immediately invalidate your strategy. But this deck does really struggle against decks like Gardevoir and Goldengo. Goldengo can be really tough. Um, the one out you have for that is they want to go first and you want to go second anyway, so you shouldn't have to worry. But you actually got to hope they put Palkia down early or they only have like one Gimme Ghoul. You got to kind of maneuver around them. And what you need to do is you need to KO the Palkia while it's still Palkia V, Echoing Hornet back, 
Haywood again, then two hit a golden go with cloth. It's a lot to ask for, especially because this deck doesn't play any hand disruption cards, which is my next point. I think this deck should play like a Roxanne. A Roxanne would be really good in here, maybe instead of an energy lotto, because I find that Electrode is most often the stronger attacker. Again, though, it depends on your matchup. Another thing that I was considering is you can even go down to three cloth. Most of the time, you're not going to need three cloth. Um, three Brute Bonnet is good, though, in case you end up discarding them off the Pokestop. And for the same reason, three cloth is good. And for that same reason, a rod is necessary. You need rod in here. I'm very happy with Hasui and Heavy Ball. I would, I was hesitant on including it, but I think that it was actually really worth it to be able to fetch Squawkabilly out, especially because of Peony. Uh, Peony is the MVP of this deck. Peony guarantees you everything. Peony guarantees you Gust. Peony, Peony guarantees you Poison. Peony guarantees you a good setup. Peony guarantees you uh, Echoing Horn plus a potential boss. Peony guarantees you a Path Bump. Peony guarantees you everything in this deck, which is what I'm really happy about. This deck has 43 trainer cards. Kind of insane. Um, so Peony can search out effectively 39 cards that aren't Peony. And, you know, one Peony can search you any combination of 42 cards because you can also search Peony with Peony. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy with this list. This is my own creation. I've not played anything quite like this before. It's really, really fun. And I really hope that you all try it. So, without any further ado, thank you all so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed and comment down below. What do you think of Pokey Cloth? What do you like? What do you dislike? What would you keep? What would you change about this list? And subscribe to the channel. I'm posting multiple Pokemon Trainer Card Game videos every single week here on the Hitmon Channing channel and until next time thank you so much for watching hitmon channing out